I'm a certified referral trainer for Michael Mayer. Um, have you guys seen this book? Yes. Has everybody? Raise your hand if you have not. Okay. Um, let's see if, we'll do a drawing later for this book. There you guys go. Okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't an autograph for somebody. But um, this book has changed my life flat out. And um, Michael Mayer came to me a couple years ago. Um, I first heard about him and I was like, okay, I get this referral thing. I'm not sure what. Okay, the book is, I'm sorry about that, uh, Seven Levels of Communication by Michael J. Mayer, M-A-H-E-R. So today we're here to talk about what I think is, I, I, I almost say it's the most important part of the book. Uh, and the reason is, is that um, it's so profound in having a real estate business. So my background, and it's called the, the, the Great Retrace. I don't know, let's see. Now my clicker's not working. There we go. Now we're having all sorts of technical difficulties today. Well, we'll, we'll go with it. Oh, still not working. So I apologize, you guys, my, my screen just froze. There we go. So it's called The Great Retrace. And we're going to get into this uh, quite extensively. I'm going to be asking you to interact. And, and this is simple, but a little complicated. And we're going to take this to a very high level. I could tell you The Great Retrace in an elevator pitch pretty quickly and you'll get the idea it'll blow your mind the interesting thing about the great retrace in michael's book there it's it, there's two parts of it it's about this big in both parts it he doesn't really cover a lot this book is basically an overview of how he built a, a, a practice where he became the the number one referred real estate agent in the country making a seven figure income who wants to do that Anybody? Pretty awesome. Okay. And, but before we get into the book and the retrace and what have you, I want to talk a little bit about me, just so you guys understand my journey and my background. So I graduated in, from college in 1992 and I got in the mortgage business right out of the get go. And I got a degree in real estate finance. I didn't really realize that I was going to be doing what I studied in college. I, I, it wasn't a plan. I was, it was copier sales, door to door or this, and I just somehow fell into it. But I tell you what, it's been a roller coaster of a ride. It's been an amazing journey. It's been a very humbling journey as well. Uh, so I've been doing this a long time. I initially started in Southern California. I started doing business, uh, all telemarketing. Who, who, who's done that before? Anybody doing door knocking, stuff like that? It, it really builds your skin up and you get thick skin, right? And so I built that up. I actually built up a business where I was sending out 100,000 mailers a month. So I had a pretty big budget in that space. I even had at one point five telemarketers working for me and telemarketing. And I'm, I, I jokingly say I can do good phone because I can do phone scripts, all of that stuff. I hate all of it. I do not like that business. I can do it. Um, I, for one of my clients, a uh, realtor, I did Zillow recently, a couple years ago. And I said, I, I really don't want to do this. I can set the whole system up. I know exactly how to, but our conversion ratios are going to be terrible. I will do this as a favor for you for four months. I said two initially, but I said, okay, four months. We got zero clients out of that. And I had a pretty decent system around it. It just didn't work for me. Okay. It's my, not my bailiwick. And what happened is I went on this journey, a couple of years in the business, okay, and doing okay, different divisions of companies, all of that stuff. And I uh, got tired. I got, you know, I'd been in the business for five or six years, ran a different division, tried to make it go public, everything. I was just tired. I had had several clients who were grinding me over a hundred or two hundred dollars, and I knew I was pretty good. And I was just like, 
I'm done. You guys ever felt like that? The grind, right? It sucked. And my, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, goes, well, people actually like you, Neil. Have you thought about doing some business with your friends? I'm like, huh, that's a novel idea. Like maybe referrals? I'm like, huh, that's great. I go, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. I met this guy, Joe Stump. Has anybody heard of Joe Stump? He's kind of one of the fathers of, of this whole referral game. He had buy referral only. I met him in 90, 1995. And Joe, um, Joe kind of made my mindset change, but I, I got away from it. And then you guys have heard of Brian Buffini? So Joe Stump taught Brian Buffini, to give you guys context. context. Um, Brian Buffini, uh, when I was coming back in and looking at referrals and stuff, really revolutionized and changed my, my mind of like what I want to do business. And initially, when you're starting up in your business, you got to think about cold business, right, coming in, whether it's an open house. I love open houses for real estate agents, by the way. I think they're great. It's a great way to get new business. I, I, I'm, I was in a Toastmasters group with this gentleman who closed 26 transactions his first year in the business. I said, what's the one thing you did? He goes, I got 15 of them from open houses. And he said, my goal is in every open house to just get one contact that I can relate to. I go, that's it? So it wasn't like he had some great system with this great login in this computer and had this great follow system. His goal is just to get one contact. And with that first year in the business, 15 transactions, I think that's pretty darn good. Would you guys agree? Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So I've been doing this a long time. Um, I became a certified referral trainer for Michael Mayer because I, I read the book. I didn't quite understand it. I'm a little slow. And I, met, I saw him present and I saw him present on this exact topic. And it just blew my mind that I'd been doing business by referral for a lot of years at this time. And I didn't think about this retrace. I, I, I just like, I'm an idiot, you know? And I'm like, God, this is so brilliant. And what's neat about Michael is um, he comes from a teaching background, but he also has really, he's really good in the psychology of business. And so that's what's so neat about him. So I, I talked my way into becoming a certified referral trainer. I'm actually one of the found, founding members. I wasn't even invited to the, the deal. I'm like, I, I want in. How do I get in? And they're like, uh, okay, you can come in. And so I talked my way into getting there. And I was there. I felt fairly comfortable and talking to people and what have you. But I didn't understand the book. And so then I became a referral trainer actually on this topic. And I've done multiple since, and it changed my life. Um, I, I've done multiple different events, a lot of Zoom trainings in the last couple of years. Next month, uh, he has a training program called Catalyst. I'm going to be teaching about time blocking. I'm kind of the time block guy in the Michael Mayer system. And so I'm also, have you guys heard of Miracle Morning for real estate agents or Miracle Morning? Who here has not? Okay, a few of you. Um, I'm also, so this guy, Hal Elrod, wrote this book on Miracle Morning, and it was basically how to start your morning with intention. What drew me to this book is if you look at some very high-performing people, they have some kind of ritual that they do in their morning, and I'm going to divert us a little bit. It's savers, okay? It's, it starts S with what are you doing in silence, meditation or prayer? What are you doing to say affirmations? Michael Mayer added appreciations because I think this is really important. What you appreciate also appreciates you. If you just get that from the, today, it will be huge, okay? And what are you doing for visualization, right? And, and I, I played uh, semi-competitive golf and I would, I would actually visualize each hole if I played the course before and hitting a shot each hole beforehand. And so we talk about visualization a lot, exercise. Exercise does not mean two-hour CrossFit. Exercise could be as simple as, as walking your dog. And then what are you doing to read? Like, so for me, a typical morning is I'll do 30 minutes of elliptical. I will do a podcast of some sort. And so I'll stack on reading. And then what am I doing to journal? And that's the basics. So I, I'm actually, I taught the class this morning. We're in the throes of what day 25 right now this month. And um, it's, it's really, really a special class. I highly recommend you get that book and read it and live it and, and 
I'll be giving you guys some other stuff about the generosity generation, stuff like that. So um, as far as me as a, a loan producer, um, I think I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I am part of Scotsman's Guide's one, top 1% 1 um, in the country. Um, also with Finance of America, I think we have, I don't really pay attention to all those numbers and stuff, but I think uh, I think we're at 1,500-ish loan officers. I think are like 70. I'm the 70th best loan officer or whatever for the company. I don't really consider it best. I just did a decent amount of volume. And I have a small team. I have a loan processor. I have an assistant for her. I'm hiring another person right now. And I have, I call her my fixer. She's my person that fixes the database, all of that kind of stuff. And, and she's part-time and a good friend of mine. So that's kind of the, my background on this. Um, let's keep going. So who here likes referrals? Yes? Okay. What's the number one reason you're not getting that first referral from every single person in your database? Not following up. Okay. Anybody else? Don't ask. Asking can be a problem. So I was, I was coached by this group called the core training way back in the day. And we used to call it that instead of the Tuesday update call, we called it the Tuesday referral call. And we said, who do you know who at your church is looking to buy or sell real estate, right? Who do you know who at your wherever that is looking to do this? Who do you know who at your kid's school? And our reviews were, you guys are referral stalking us flat out. And we were. And, and I paid referral fees to my team at the time to referral stock. And what can happen with that, if you ask too hard, it can be really bad. It can be a total turnoff, okay? But I want you to think about what we portray in our business is we portray we're successful, right? We do so well. We're, we're doing great. And so what really the reason why you're not getting the first referral. Before I get into that though, think about this. How many people are in your phone? You guys ever check that out, right? Probably thousands, right, Stephanie? Probably thousands of people, right? Um, some people, maybe 200, they'll call it even your database. 200, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever it might be. Imagine how your life would change if every single person gave you one referral this year. Would that be life-changing, right? And even if you had a really bad conversion ratio, you might make a little bit more money, right? And so think about that as you're going into this concept because it's so, so important that you anchor into, how could I do better? I, I'm doing this constantly. I'm like, why am I not getting a referral from everybody? That's really important to think about, okay? And this is what it is. Do you guys know what perceived indifference is? No? Yes? I'm not seeing any. Okay, so perceived indifference. I drive my Audi, right? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. I don't really need your referral. I'm doing so great. No big deal. Like, oh, Neil's so successful. He doesn't need that referral. Doesn't think about it, right? So they, they think about, I'm just indifferent. Does that make sense? Right? I, I, I don't really need it. I, I, true example, uh, the maid of honor in my wedding, and we just were 20 years being married, and about five years in my wedding, I've got little kids running around crazy, right? I'm having to provide. Maid of honor in my wedding goes, oh, Neil, we had dinner. Neil, I didn't. I had somebody to refer you, but your wife, my best friend, tells me how busy you are all the time. And I don't want to give you, I didn't want to make you more busy. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding? Really? She's like, no, because you're all stressed out all the time. And I'm like, I'm okay with it. I, I, no, and like, you're one of my best referral sources. Like, please do not do that. It's so, so important how referrals are from you. I really appreciate every single referral you give me. It's a big deal. It really is. Does that make sense? So what I have a question is, is how are you guys all doing with this perceived indifference? Anybody? 
Nicole, I'm pick on you. How are you doing in this space? Uh, good and bad. Okay, out of 10, how would you rate yourself? 10 being the highest. So Nicole would give herself a seven. Okay, what could you do better? Okay. Yep. Good. Anybody else? No? I guess you guys are all doing great and perceived indifference. That's great. I'm not. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, but, but I could be better. So next question I have, what's the number one re reason you're not getting the second referral from everybody in your database? Think about that. What do you guys think? Okay. Um, go ahead. It's not keeping that same relationship with that referral that gave you that referral versus one for you again. Like you kind of got the referral and then you dropped it and you know, okay, I got what I needed from it. So it's just continuing to build that relationship that you have. So, so the answer is uh, not uh, appreciating it, not continuing the, the relationship with it. So saying, hey, thank you for the referral and kind of moving on, right? That's, that's a really good one. And then that's, that's kind of in, in light of where we're going on this. Um, so think about how hard it is to get the first referral. Do you think it's harder to get the first refer referral from somebody or the fifth? First is critical, mission critical. It's actually mission critical if you can get the first referral during the transaction. That's the time you get to spend the most time with them is getting the referral during the transaction. Extremely, extremely important. But getting the second referral is, is so critical too because then it's kind of like you've pushed this boulder up a hill, right? We talked about this, pushing this boulder up this hill and we're working and we're working and getting this momentum and then we get the one referral. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, cool. Well, then what happens is actually the hill gets a little bit less steep. And what happens is it gets easier to move it up the mountain. And what ends up happening is the third, fourth, fifth, if you implement this process alone, will will absolutely it'll be like pushing the 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 mountain, pushing the thing down the mountain. And that's where I really want you guys to get is understanding and honoring this process. Because the cool part is it's fun and it's free. And there's lots of ways to play around it. We don't have enough time today to talk through all of that, but I promise you, you're gonna get something out of it. So lack of expressed appreciation is the answer here. Um, now, do you guys probably appreciate the commission check, right? You appreciate the money coming in. So you appreciate it when somebody gives you a referral, right? Feels pretty good, appreciate all the things you can do with your family, right? All that stuff. But what do you do to express that? What do you do to express that? We don't really go to class and there's not really a class on how to say, hey, thank you. I really appreciate you. And we could talk for the next hour on just that alone, right? But I think for you, that's really, really important. You have to really resonate what it is are you doing to show appreciation? Extremely important. And so my, my question is, it's hard to see, because hold on a second, I have this, see if I can slow this down here. Um, is appreciation really important? I've already answered this, right? I'm gonna give you a great example. So um, has anybody ever had a referral, right? But, but you, you, you um, or you, excuse me, you referred somebody and uh, they, they were like, huh, okay, thanks. Or, or let's, let's turn it another way. Has you ever gotten a referral and you busted your butt? You did everything, you nailed it, everything. And they were like, huh, thanks. Well, or if, if they even thank you, right? They just expected you to do that, right? And you killed it on that referral. Well, well think about that. Do you guys want to work with them again? No, no, please don't. Please don't. That's the one thing that I got out of seven levels of communication is um, 
almost to discriminate in your database to have a VIP platform. You know, the people that are A pluses in my database, uh, we go to lunch for their birthday if we can, right? COVID's a little different, right? But, but the people that don't really refer a one-time client, I, I have an email program, like even my buddy just said, because, hey, thank you so much for the, for the birthday email this morning. It was so great. Your automated system did that for me. And I said, ha, 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 I was, I was thinking about you in my underwear. That, are you uncomfortable now? You know, he starts laughing. So he knew that an automated system went on that stuff. But, but, but all, then you guys think about this with appreciation. Imagine that person that you get and you do all your ordinary stuff. Like all your, I'm a systems person. So all your structure, personal note, whatever you might be, but you just do all the ordinary stuff. But these people are like, yes, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? They've expressed appreciation. Well, have you guys heard of uh, five love languages? I'm words of affirmation. I'm that Labrador retriever. You say, Neil, you're doing a good job. I'm like, <laughs> you know, this is great. Oh my God, it's more. Give me more, give me more. What else do you want me to do, right? Same thing. Like if, if somebody says that to us, we want to go do well, right? And we want to go kill it for them again and again. And it just, it, it's inherent. And that's really what this is about, is this expressed appreciation. It's so, so important. So I want you guys to think about this great retrace. And we're going to talk about actual, this is an actual retrace for me. Um, and how many here has retrace? Raise your hand if you don't know about retrace. A few people? Okay. Okay. So the idea of retrace is, and we're going to go over here and we'll, we'll look at this. So Miguel was just referred to me, right, by, I think it's Ian. I, well, I know it's Ian, but I can't read it. Uh, but Miguel was referred to me by Ian. And typically what happens is, get a referral. What do you do, Nicole? First exchanges. Call the referral source, right? Thank you so much. Maybe a personal note. Okay. I've... I've been in the referral game from with the Feeney since 1998. I've been doing this by referral for a long, long time. Okay. I used to send $5 gift cards and then I would Starbucks, you know, Starbucks, Starbucks, Starbucks. I did a lot of those and I even put my you know, a logo on it and put, I did all sorts of stuff in that. And then like, what happens if they give you a million dollar referral? Do you have guilt around giving them just a $5 gift card, right? So then I'm like, oh, maybe I got to give them a $50 gift card because I don't know, right? Are they really referring us or referred me because of a gift card? No. So what's happened is by giving them the gift card, you've actually monetized your relationship to them and said, you are worth $5 to me, Nicole. Right? How does that feel? I don't feel very good at all. And so I don't think you should give anything monetarily in special occasions you can but most for the most part anything monetarily for any referral i think a personal note's great i think a phone call is great or michael calls them power notes okay but some kind of handwritten note not when you do the there's that e thing where you subscribe you prescribe your thing and you type it in and it puts in your handwriting you can totally tell it's fake don't do that spend the time my handwriting's horrible and people go, I love your notes, but I can't read them. I go, neither can I. <laughs> so, but they get the intention, right? And so, so now Ian, and usually it stops there. I might have called Ian, personal note, thank you so much for referring Miguel, right? And I leave it at that. Maybe I, if I'm really good and on top of my game, I would call Ian when it closed. Okay. But I also make sure, side note, is you need to call the referral source if it doesn't work out. Very, very mission critical. Because I can't tell you how many times I've moved on and I forgot. And I saw the person a couple months ago and they heard, oh, I heard it didn't work out from you or whatever. And so you really want to understand that. Who's, who's the most important person when somebody refers you? Nicole, you can't answer that. The person that referred you. Exactly. You've got to honor that referral source. That's so, so important for them to stick their neck out on the line for you. It's mission critical that you understand that and you're going to keep them posted. Okay. Now, 
what about Josh? What do you guys think about Josh? Is he kind of important in this chain? Yeah? Huh? He referred Ian. That's pretty cool, right? Does anybody ever call the, the Joshes of the world? Well, I keep, thank him. You're, you're dead on it. The great retrace is you got to call Josh and thank him. Okay. And Josh might not know Miguel. In this case, actually, Josh does because I got a fireman crew right here. It's crazy. <laughs> so the firemen stick together. It's pretty awesome. So what's crazy. So I, I could call Josh and be like, hey, Josh, I could do a play on it. Hey, Josh. Hey, thanks for referring Miguel. And he's going to be like, who's Miguel? Right. I, if they didn't know each other. Right. And so then you can play on it. Oh, well, you actually, you referred me Ian and Ian referred me Miguel. So you can play on it that way. Right. And so you can do something like that if you wanted to, or you can say, you know what? And so it just depends on my mood, whether I'm feisty or not, how I do this. But sometimes I would call and just say, you know what, Josh, how are you? I just want to tell you, thank you. And they'll be like, what are you talking about? And I'll be like, well, because you referred me Ian, that who then referred me to Miguel, I'm helping Miguel out. He's like, oh my God, that's cool. Right. And so, um, and then let's say you go down the line, right. And you have Mike and Lisa, you can just keep going down the line and you get any updates. Now, why I have in here is think about triggers. Um, I'm specifically going to talk to, because I'm a lender, so I'm talking about the lender side and some of the things we do, but we're going to specifically talk about it from a listing agent side, okay? But I want you to think about your transaction and how it flows for you and what, I hate to say it, it's excuses that you have to call these people. So what's so neat about calling somebody like a Mike or a Lisa that I haven't talked to in a while is... I don't, I'm not calling with commission breath as, how's your house going? I see on Zillow, it's worth blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's totally different. It's you're thanking them. You're showing gratitude. It is cool. So when I first learned this program from Michael five years ago or so, I, I, I don't got the years together straight, but I, they said, I go, when do I start? You can start now. And I looked at the transactions I was closing that month, maybe somewhere about six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It doesn't really matter. But the point was, I looked at these transactions. I mapped out my retrace. And Brian, who at the very bottom of this, was actually at both ends of the retrace. And Brian uh, used to play uh, some competitive two-man volleyball when I was in my late 30s or 20s and stuff. And Brian was my big guy partner. And I, got, I was a little guy running around the back. Um, and so... Uh, I called Brian one day and I go, so this is my point of telling you this, this works. Brian had, was my number one referral source. At one point I got 12 referrals from him in one year closed. He's not a, he's, he's just a connector. So Brian hadn't referred anybody for a while, uh, for about five, six, seven years, because my processor told him, like, well, I was in transaction. I was at a training. She said, Brian, I need to call you tomorrow. I have to go pick up my kids. He called me hot meal. I know you don't, basically, I know you don't care about me anymore, blah, blah, blah. So that's what it felt like, even though Brian and I will go have drinks and everything, but he stopped referring. It was the retrace that re-engaged Brian. I called him and said, hey, Brian, I want to tell you, I haven't really talked business with you in a while. I'm closing two transactions this month because of you. He's like, oh my God, that's cool. How, how? I go, well, you referred Lisa, referred Mike, who referred Ian. And I went down this. He's like, okay, how about who? And then, then I went off and imagine this is a tree, right? I went off and Mike, Mike actually refers me a ton of business too. And so I went off on the branch with Mike and he goes, oh my God, that's awesome. Thank you. Guess what happened? I closed three transactions that year from Brian. Not a referral in five years. And I closed three transactions. That's pretty good, right? Go ahead. Yeah, one phone call to Brian. Yeah, so the question is, was that one phone call to Brian? Yes, I was just learning to retrace. I just called about the referral uh, in the middle of it, and I didn't do anything else. I didn't call when it closed. So this is baby steps 101 on the retrace, right? If you can just get one call, you're winning, and I promise you, you're going to get something out of it, okay? Okay. So let's keep going here. So this is about what are your triggers? I want you to think about that. As a lender, 
we don't have when we get, we maybe have when we get in contract, but we don't necessarily have when they sign a, um, a listing agreement with us, right? So you, I typically do this, the front end and then the close as a lender. As an agent, this is where you guys, actually, here's what I want you to do before we get into this. Real quickly, I want you to write down the last referred transaction. Take a minute. Write down your last referred transaction. And I want you to retrace it. Now, if you don't have a good one, you can go to another one. If this is not, I'm not going to like hold you accountable and look at your transaction records and all of that stuff. Okay, I promise. But I want you to think about this. Just pick one. And one of my calls to action today, you guys, is I want you to do this retrace. It doesn't matter if it's four months ago. It does not matter. You're still calling with appreciation and thanking them and go, here's, how you, here's the script. Oh, my God, Brian, I just learned this. Is what I did. Brian, I just learned this really cool thing. And I just realized I got two referrals from you that's or basically because of you that are closing this month. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that hard? No, it's not hard. Is it fun? Yeah, it is. It's better than, hey, Brian, your house now is worth $453,000. And how's it going? How's that living room treating you? Right? Or how's the swimming pool? I, I don't, that's a part of it. And, and I, I'm a little jaded. I've been doing this business a long, long time. I am, I need excuses to call my database flat out. And this is one of the best excuses to call your database because you're calling them and thanking them and showing appreciation. And guess what? All those people on that line have referred me. And so how cool to reconnect with them in that space, right? So you guys done retrace. So anybody have a retrace where you, you have that next person? So you have the one person referred, one person after that. Raise your hand. Okay. How about the next person? So that'd be three, right? Four, five, Nicole. Oh, six, five, Nicole, five. Five is pretty awesome. I'm, I, I usually can resonate in the five, six range kind of thing. I've heard, it's like the missile, mythical unicorn out there. I've heard of 20 and 30. Like, how cool would that be? You need a little time in your day, though. But <laughs> you definitely need some phone time. So that's, think about that. And my challenge to you guys that have done this, just go back. And what you want to do with the retrace is just go backwards now. And start just retracing, put some, I'm, I'm a time block guy, so block some time, retrace time, and I want you to go and start setting some times to go retraces. I promise you, you're going to get some referrals. I promise you. Let's keep going. This is what I call lucky to be a realtor. And the reason is, as a realtor, you guys have more trigger points than we do as lenders. So obviously, the, orig the original referral, that's pretty easy, right? You got that. Then you have exclusive right to sell. So they, you know, they sign the contract for the listing agreement. Well, and this is specifically for listing, right? And then you have the zero trigger or zero day, day zero. Do you guys ever, you guys understand day zero? The first day it goes on the market is day zero. Okay, and we're gonna go into this in a little detail. Is, is day zero kind of, kind of important? It's kind of a big deal, right? Is there a little intensity going on in day zero? Just a tick? Okay, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, also, when they get in contract, right? When they've gotten the contract to sell is an important one. And obviously, when they're closed. And so, very simple. The retrace can be a phone call, voicemail, text, and right and on the, the right to sell. A phone call, probably the, one of the more important ones is the day zero is extremely important. Okay. And, and then you see the rest of there. Okay. So this one right here is new to me as of this year, and I'm not perfect in implementing it, but I want to tell you, it's, if you really think about it, this is the brilliance in this. Okay. So first of all, you're going to write down everybody on your retrace. You guys have already done this. This one thing alone, I don't even think Nicole's, Nicole's a certified referral trainer. I don't think Nicole's heard this. Okay, this one thing alone is a is a Facebook post. Yeah, take pictures of that. It's a Facebook post of what you do. And what happens is you go about four or five deep 
Okay, and I'm gonna read it to you. Hi, Mike. This is a Facebook post, okay? Hi, Mike, just wanna say thank you. Ian Gilmore, it's in blue, because you tagged him, right? So mind you, tagging on Facebook is really important, right? Referred me to great seller today. You don't put the seller's name. And if you remember correctly, you connected me to Josh Callista, who referred me to Ian a few years back. With, so without you connecting me to Josh, I would never have met Ian. As a result, I would never have had the opportunity to help his family. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. You can play into it. Yo, bro, whatever like things you want to do or whatever context you want to do to do with friends. But the key thing is you've now just tagged all these people that are in your retrace line. And there, now you've created an awareness. Now you're getting in front of all these people. You're showing expressed appreciation. Ding, ding, ding. This one thing right here, I could drop the mic and you guys just do this and I guarantee you'll get referrals. Okay, but we're gonna go, we're gonna keep going. Okay. Do you guys have any questions on this? I think it's pretty straightforward. I do want you to call the person that referred you as well and show appreciation to them. You don't necessarily have to call up the upline on the seller side of it. So the neat thing what I've learned about Michael Mayer in the 7L system is it's an outline. It's a perfect, it's, it's not a perfect storm. Nicole and I have both done virtual events. I did a personal chef. She's done a s'mores. Totally two different things. She, she, was like, she was like the Indian with arrows in the butt because she was blazing the trail before I was comfortable with doing it. But then I saw what she did, I got comfortable, and I did it my own way. And that's important. Okay, any questions in this space? So what have you guys learned so far? One thing. What's that? Express gratitude, great. What else? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Cool, we're gonna keep going because I, I, I'm, uh, I'm talking too much. Um, so now exclusive right to sell, this is simple, just a text or voicemail. You don't have to get into the big thing and what have you. This is pretty, pretty. it's, it's showing consistency in systems, right? And it's showing gratitude, okay? Now this, is, this next one is, is a little bit more complicated because it's the day zero call, okay? And uh, you might wanna take a picture of this. So the day zero call, you call the client, right? And um, do you guys call your clients day zero? Yes. Good. Good answer. Listen, do what he does. So here's the deal. Day zero. How are they feeling, right? How are they feeling? I'm skipping around here a little bit. Excited. They're excited. Are you sure? They're excited? Nervous. Hopeful. hopeful. Probably more hopeful and nervous, right? Maybe tired? Tired because because Elzar went and put him to work. I mean, he made him do all the stuff. You're like, oh my God, like really? I have to do that? Yes, you do if you want the best price. So one of the things you want to tell them is there's a showing. You need to show your property anytime. I you have to be available. It's mission critical that you are available on the showing. You guys agree? Yeah. Okay, cool. And there's a thing called realtor time. You guys heard of realtor time? Yeah, realtor time. So what realtor time really is, is that when you lay out, when you have your different showings that you're gonna do in that day, and let's say the first showing they go and you guys ever driven by and the people are like, nope, right? And then you have time to burn and you're going, crap, I have a whole hour I had allocated for this. And what am I gonna do with them, right? So. You might be as a realtor scrambling going, can I get in early? Can I get in early, right? So one of the things you do, or in, in the verse, or let me finish that thought. Also, have you ever had a time where they're in for an hour and you're like kind of kick them out the door, but you know they want to write on it and you're like, but come on, we got other appointments to meet, right? And so then now you're late to the next one and you're totally apologetic, right? So if you have a two o'clock appointment, typically the seller, you tell them, you know, leave it at 150, right? And then come back at 210, or 310, excuse me, why not tell them 130 or 115? And why not tell them to come back a little later so that there's a window of opportunity to show the house? And this is about setting expectations to make it convenient for the people to buy their house. 
So they got to really get it, right? And so how are you feeling is really important because how they're feeling most of the time, they're excited, but they're more nervous. And what you're wanting to do, the together is a really important thing is, listen, Nicole, I am here with you to help you get through this. And we are going to do this together. Deep psychology in this is that they, you are bringing them in to the team, right? Because they're a little nervous about selling their house, right? Day zero, you don't want to have a house fall out of escrow day four, right? You want them to be a part of the team. This is the psychology about it. And you say, you know what? I feel, Miguel, I feel so excited and, and I'm so thankful to you for letting me have this opportunity. So express gratification. The other piece you're going to do is you're going to say, guess what? 95% of the people come from all the, the MLS and what we do normally, open houses and what have you, right? But I want you to be part of, do you want to do 95% effort in this or 100%? They'll say 100%, right? And then we go, I want you to do the extra 5%. This, are, you, are you with me on the 5%? Yes. And so now what you're doing is you're getting them, you're creating a post for them to email out to everybody, basically saying, hey, everybody, my house is on the market. You, you create this for them and send it to them. You tell them to blind carbon copy everybody that they know on this, and then they're, they're going to CC you. So anytime they have any questions, it doesn't go to them. It, it's going to go, and it even says, like, yeah, my realtor is... is, is carbon on this. So please respond to them and ask them any questions. Is, is that, does that take a lot of money? No, that's pretty powerful, right? Then on top of that, you have them, you're actually going to take one of the key things in a listing is you, one of the top three things that, that really attract you to this home, right? It's probably going to be the top three things that you attract for the next buyer. Have them write that out. Should be probably, that's probably in your MLS. Right, take that, put it on Facebook with everything, and you're gonna say, Hey, can you? I'm gonna tag you. Can you put this to your Facebook people and tag me on it? Now, what we're having is she's marketing or they're marketing to your Miguel's marketing to everybody that you're their realtor. How cool is that? Pretty powerful, right? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so then you say, You know what? I'm gonna call Ian next. Have you talked to Ian in a while? Well, no, great to talk to him. So Ian's the person that referred Miguel, right? And so, well, I'm going to have Ian give you a call. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. That'd be great. Another thing, every Monday, we do reviews. Monday is a key, key time to do reviews for sellers because what's the most important and most activity is on a weekend. So we're going to be updating you every Monday on what's going on in your house as we get through this process. And you're telling that, setting the expectations. We call it the Tuesday update call in the loan business because a lot of times we don't want them calling us on Thursday, Friday, Saturday with questions because they know that they're going to be getting a call on Tuesday. It makes it more efficient. It makes them feel important. The referral forces I have love Tuesday update calls, especially financial advisors love the Tuesday update calls. Okay. Any questions in this? No? Okay, cool. Let me keep going. So this next call is really important. Okay. And this is to Ian. And take a picture of this too. So Miguel's house is on the market. Oh my God, that's awesome. Ian's gonna say, oh, that's so cool. Thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you what, Ian, it's, if it was, wasn't for you, I would not be in the spot to help Miguel and his family. I so appreciate you. Expressed appreciation, right? Then you're gonna say, help, spread the word, right? We talked about Facebook. We talked about all of that stuff, right? You're gonna get them to, to first of all, you send this, the copy to them. You get their buy-in and what it says so that they're helping. They might have some tweaks and stuff. Maybe they're a more eloquent writer than you. That's okay. You get them to tweak it. You get them to send it out to their peeps. And now you've got them invested in the game of getting Miguel's house, right, out there. Now, then you're going to say, uh, I have a favor for you. Can you call Miguel? Oh, yeah. I'd love to talk to Miguel. I just talked to Miguel. He's a little freaked out. Yeah, well, I, I remember when I sold my house. Yeah, he's a little, can you just call him and calm him down and make sure he understands everything's cool? Yes, got it. And then you're going to do is uh, so reconnect, right? Call Miguel, reconnect to Josh. Hey, Ian, I'm going to be talking to Josh. Have you talked to Josh in a while? No. Oh my God, I would love to talk to him. Well, I'm going to have Josh give you a call. Do you mind? Simple as that, right? And, and also, 
I'm going to be doing different reviews through the process as different things happen. Are you okay if I can keep you posted on it? Yes. Now, guess what? Ian is invested in Miguel. He's on the team to get Miguel to sell the house, right? And what is that a little different than a lot of agents are doing? Is that a, is that a good conversation piece? Go ahead. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. The question is, do, uh, do they put, a, put together a Facebook and email to, for Ian to do the same thing? Yes, you do. Very, very important because you're getting the whole team and they're tagging you. And the important thing is now Ian is tagging you to all his people. and all. So you're getting in front of how many 500,000 people with Ian has, but you're getting in contact as an agent that Ian's kind of endorsing you. Does that make sense? So that's the power in this, okay? So I'm going to skip this part because we're I'm talking way too much. So anyways, Josh's call. This is where you get a play on it. Very important. Hey, you know, this, manager, what I said earlier about what I do as a lender is a little different than what's going on right now. So now is the first time you've called the third person that referred. And you're saying, guess what? Miguel's house is on the market. And he's like, what's he say? Who's Miguel? Exactly. He's going to say, who is Miguel? Well, you didn't really refer me, Miguel, but you referred me Ian, right? Who, excuse me, you referred me Josh, who referred me Ian. Who, is that, does that make sense to you guys? Right? Actually, no. Uh, yeah, jo Josh is, yeah, it's called Josh. You referred me uh, Ian, who referred me Miguel, okay? And so then you, you show express appreciation, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Help spread the word. Same thing. Would you mind doing that? Yep. Now you got this person involved. The other thing that's really cruel about the retrace, these people were referred before and you're re-engaging them and you're getting them to go help other people. Super cool. It puts you, it makes them feel good and it puts you in a better light. So here's another cool thing. To be a connector or reconnect, right? Hey, can you please call Josh? But also let's just say, or not Josh, can you please call Ian? But let's just say, that this person and Miguel have something in common. They both work in the first same fire station, so that's easy for them. But 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 normal. Let's just say they don't. But there's, let's say they have there there are two people in IT or something like that, and they need to meet. Now you go connect them. Hey, would you mind? Hey, you know what? You and Miguel, would, you guys would hit it off. You guys both play softball. You guys you guys should talk. And so now you're being a connector. Right. And then you're also saying, hey, you know, I was referred by the other person. Right. In this case, it's Mike. I'm going to have I'm going to talk to Mike. Have you talked to Mike in a while? No. Could you have him? Is it OK if I have him call you? Yes. So now you're putting together You're gluing. I have one friend. We, his nickname is the glue. He brings us all together all the time. OK, so that's what you're doing is you're being the glue. OK. So we've talked through the retrace. OK. We've gone through everything, the triggers. What are your triggers? This is just an example of what you can do. Very important. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to open up with any questions. We have, we have a little bit of time here. It's okay to be first. No questions? Um, well, I, I personally wouldn't make it a novel, right? I mean, think about your emails that you do in business and stuff like that. You don't want to lose people in it. Um, that context is more about this thing called thinker, know, or feeler. And you have to think about learning modalities. And so if you happen to know each person, I mean, that's a whole, whole nother training. Um, but, but I would just keep it precise. Here's what's going on. Here's the house and what have you there. You know, if, if you have somebody looking in the area, you know, cause there, there's a chance that that's actually going to hit. There's a, I think NAR says what, four to 6% of people know the people they're buying their house. That's kind of in the same context. No, day, day zero. I mean, again, Michael says, this is just framework. Just keep that in mind. It's framework. And so what you have to do, you. That makes sense? Question. Uh, 
So the question is about the VIP list, the A plus, okay? How do I differentiate? Boy, I could talk about that for a couple hours. Um, there's lots of ways. One uh, way of doing it, and that's a, a, another class, uh, energy. Who do you like? Right? You can grade by energy, flat out. Uh, that's, that's probably one of the easier ways to do it because you like hanging out with them. You like talking to them. You can maybe go have a beer or coffee or whatever you do. Go hit golf balls, something with them. And it's easy, right? Um, but I, I'm a little more pragmatic. You guys have heard disc. I'm a little more high on the D side of life than I, but uh, I still like to have fun. Uh, but my thing is, is it, 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 to me, it's like, are they referring me, right? Are they referring me and are they giving me good referrals? I had one financial advisor, buddy of mine, extremely successful. He actually runs the West Coast now for all of Edward Jones. He does extremely well. He referred me one time, 25 clients in one year. I closed one transaction. That was a lot of flipping work. I, I was kissing a lot of frogs. I had another realtor who gave me four referrals and I closed three. And they all happened to be much higher than my normal price point. And I, until I did the exercise to understand what was going on in my closings and where I got them, I had no idea. She was, she was a rock star, 75% close rate and higher, like $150,000 higher loan amounts. That's pretty good, right? And normally I would think Craig is the, the bar because he gave me 25 referrals. Not really. I had to go, I had to go readjust in that, that relationship. That was our, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. How often are you engaging all of those outside of that? So that's a great question. So, um, so the question is, is how often am I engaging to everybody else outside of that? Um, I have a whole marketing plan. I have a whole VIP plan where uh, my A pluses get different invitations. I did a virtual training class last year. I only invited my top 25 people. It cost me about $130 a person. I had a chef, personal chef do a virtual training cooking class. And I had all the food, everything prepped up in bottles of wine. I, I kind of geek out in the wine space for fun. And I, we hand delivered it to everybody's house. And we had a chef cook. And people loved it. But those, that's, not, that's not for everybody, right? So I do a lot of different events. I also last year did a pie day. You guys have heard of pie days? I did a pie day. I did it live. Um, I only had, I did in my house. I uh, had only 25 people there, but there were a lot of my VIPs. I also had, I also did a comedy show, mostly second quarter last year. I did a comedy show, comedy show. I was going for everybody about 500 people I invited. I had like 28 with COVID action, right? I was planning for a hundred. I was planning for a hundred in, in my area in Sacramento. We have COVID way worse than you guys for some reason. It's just crazy. We joke about we have the surrounding counties don't have COVID just in Sacramento. And so everybody was freaked out. Uh, we had 25. And so I budgeted for a hundred and I like a cocktail. So I said, you know what? Open bar. I, Cause I had the money, right? Already budgeted. So we had a great time. The owner was like, oh my God, your clients drink a lot. Of, yeah. They're friends of mine, you know, and we had a great time. So I use events to invite people is my, is my point. I don't, and I, I, I attempt birthdays, lunches, all of that stuff. It's hard when you're doing a lot of business, it's hard to engage so much. You know, I have marketing stuff. I'm on this whole diatribe of social uh, that is, I'm a little uncomfortable to be honest with you, but I'm doing it and it seems to be working and stuff like that. Any other questions? They know you're busy, usually, yeah. especially if you're not on a team. How do you overcome that perception that they have that you're too busy? So, them, but so the question is, how do you overcome the perceived indifference to your friends? That's a tough one. Um, and here's what I used to say. Brian Buff got this from Brian Buffini. I'm never too busy for your referrals. Okay. 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 And, but you got to show it. And you got it. You can't be always running around with a chicken and your head cut off. In, in this great book called The Present, right? You can't worry about the past, right? And freak out about it. 
or you can't dwell on it. You can't freak out about the future. You got to be in the moment. If I was here on my phone, I wouldn't be on the moment, right? And so if I was here on your phone, I might have a couple transactions going crazy. Am I showing you the love? So when you're with people, you got to be with them and understand and tell them. And, and, and success stories are great where you're telling me about this and that and that and what have you, you know? Does that make sense? I, one of my homework assignments is I'm supposed to do is on socials. I'm supposed to, I'm licensed in several states. Is I'm supposed to say, why am I licensed in several states? I'm actually licensed in Arizona because of Nicole, uh, partially because I had to get Nevada and then Oregon and whatever. And then and I just said, Arizona, that's great. I do reverse mortgages too. So that's one of the big things is I wanted to be able to, I thought this would be a great place for reverse mortgages as well. Uh, any other questions? No? Well, we're good. You guys, thank you so much. You guys reach out to me. Here's the deal. I am an open book. I will tell you everything. I, I, I really will. And I, I, it's, it's, time is tough for me, but, but I will schedule some time with you. Um, you guys can email me. You guys can text me, call me, what have you. Just identify who you are and how you found out of me. And I just want to thank you guys all for taking your time. Okay. Is this still on? Okay. So I'm sure Bobby would appreciate this, but when you're making sure that you're not too busy for your other people's referrals, one of the easiest things you can do, guys, answer your damn phone. That's it. Bobby, answer your phone, right? Like that's one of the most important things that we can do as realtors. How many of you got something out of today? Right, valuable. So along, I know we had some tech issues and we will uh, work through those for the next one. But I promise you, we're going to continue to bring value. We're going to continue to add value. We hope to give you as much as we can to help you with all of your businesses. So, Neil, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate you. And for all of you on Zoom, we will get it right. I promise we will get it right. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.